Hi everyone, my name is Iago. I'm working with the University of Sussex and the Atlas Experiment at CERN. And this video is part of a tutorial series from Atlas Open Data. Today, we will be learning how to create histograms with PyRoot. This video is divided into three sections, underlying physics, root concepts, and root coding, in which we'll be working through a Jupyter notebook together. Each section has its timestamp indicated on the screen now and in the progress bar below. Feel free to start from any of them according to your needs. Let's start from scratch. For this tutorial, we will need to briefly introduce the standard model and how Feynman diagrams work. The standard model is the most accurate theory to describe the building blocks of matter, fundamental forces, and their interactions. However, it does not yet incorporate the gravitational force. That's something for later. According to it, the universe is made of matter particles and force carriers. For example, protons and neutrons are made of matter particles called quarks, whereas electrons are part of a larger group called leptons. Fundamental forces are described as the exchange of force carriers that are called bosons between different matter particles. The most common example is the photon, which is exchanged during interaction via the electromagnetic force. Here on the right, we can see gamma representing the photon. We have Z, W plus, and W minus bosons representing the weak force, and the gluon representing the strong force. Add that to gravity, and you have all the fundamental forces, and the Higgs boson, which gives particles their mass. Developed by the Nobel laureate and physicist Richard Feynman, Feynman diagrams model subatomic process across space and time. Conventionally, straight lines represent fermions, like matter particles, while squiggly lines represent bosons. Yet one of the most fundamental properties of these diagrams are con the conservation laws, such as the conservation of charge, should hold at the vertices, here represented by the black dot, and along the arrow of time. The example used in the upcoming data analysis is a Z boson decay into a lepton antileptin pair. We can see how the Z boson is stationary since it's only moving through time and not through space. Decays after a short period of time into two leptons. Since the charge of this lepton is positive and the charge of that lepton is negative, the charges cancel each other, resulting in a net zero charge, which agrees with the previous charge of the Z boson, which is also zero, hence conserving charge. We know these two leptons are moving in space and time since they're represented by a diagonal, which means that they're moving both horizontally and vertically. In summary, the center model provides an accurate theory behind fundamental particles, forces, and their interactions. And the Feynman diagram is a model that aids physicists to understand and predict possible different standard model interactions. Using root provides with a series of advantages. Milling allows for fast storage, access, and processing of large amounts of data while being free of charge and open source. The main element of the library is the root file. It contains data structure into trees, variables, and entries. Any analysis with root requires an understanding and manipulation of these partitions. Starting from the bottom, we have the file itself, here represented by the root. Later, we have the data set, which is the tree. Each tree has different variables or branches that represent each type of measurement, length, height, duration, distance, and etc. And each variable has its own entries or leaves, which are the values of the data itself. To put anything in root, you need first to create a canvas. It takes a name, like its identity, a title, and its dimensions in length and height, in pixels. Since we're dealing with entries for continuous data, we'll be using histograms in the analysis. If you're unfamiliar with histograms, please pause the video and go first check this other material that is appearing as an info card on your screen now. In root, a histogram takes a name, just like the canvas, a title, the number of bins, and the upper and lower boundary of the x-axis, essentially stating what is your x-axis number line, so the beginning and the end of it, and how you're going to divide it into different sections or bins. In summary, a root file contains a tree, a data set, which has branches, variables, that have leaps, entries. And when plotting, you must first create a canvas so that then you can add a histogram or any other chart. What other file types do you know that are similar to the root one? Leave your ideas in the comment section. Now let's move to the example of root coding in a Jupyter notebook. 
After opening the link in the description, we we'll click on Launch a Binder, which is a virtual machine, so that we can work with the code without having to download it. After you click, you're going to have to wait a little bit for the virtual machine to start, and then we'll see all the repository with the files we need for the analysis. Once loaded, we'll click on the 13 Tera Electron Votes examples. Then we click in Python for the Pi root analysis. And then we go to the fourth notebook, Simple Python Example History. After the loads, we're going to click on Not Trust It, and then Trust that all of the plots can properly work. First of all, when R is using root, we need to first import the library. So we write import and root. This line over here adds some interactivity to your plot. But if it generates some errors, you can just comment it out by adding a tic-tac-toe sign to it in the spacebar. Before we begin with the coding, let's just recap the physical phenomena we're dealing with. Here we have a Z boson decaying into an electron and a positron. Charge is conserved since before we have zero charge, and then later the positive and negative charge cancel each other into a net zero. Hence, we'll be dealing with the analysis of particularly these two lectins. We then need to start by getting the file itself. So we just declare a variable f, and then inside the root library, we get tfile.open, and as a string, we add the address of our file. We have other files over here, but let's just work with the first one for this analysis. Secondly, we need to create a canvas to plot any of our charts. So we just, again, declare a variable, in this case, canvas, and then inside the root library, we get t canvas, and then we write the name, the identity of the canvas, the title, and then its dimensions in pixel. To access the data inside the root file, remember that we need to first have then a tree. So we declare a variable, we call it tree, and then inside the file, we get the tree called mini. Now to see how many entries we have in that tree, we just go tree.getEntries, and it outputs the amount of entries. In this case, we have 53,653 different values. Now we will define a histogram. So again, we declare a variable, Inside the root library, we do dot thif, the identity name of our histogram, the title, which will be written at the top of the chart, the number of bins we want, and the upper and lower boundary of our x-axis. Since we will be counting the number of events with a particular number of leptons, the number of leptons itself is our x-axis, and the amount of events with that characteristic is our y-axis. So to populate our histogram, we then need to loop over all of those entries. So we do for event in the tree, his.fill and tree.lepton number. So we're going to fill our histogram with the lepton number of our data inside the tree. Then we just print done to see that we finish with the for loop. Now, just for a bit of a customization, we set the color as red by doing his.setfill color and two, and then we need to draw the histogram, so histo.draw, and then finally remember that it's always dependent on the canvas, so we do canvas.draw as well. As such, the final output is our histogram. We can see on the y-axis, that's the number of events. In the x-axis is the number of leptons, our title, example plot, number of leptons, and then a legend, which says how many entries we have, 53,653, that checks us with the amount of entries we saw that are in the tree. So we're not excluding any of those values. It also gives a bit of statistics about it. So the mean number of leptons is about 1.7 and the standard deviation of our number of leptons is roughly 0.5. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in a later time.